Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our service this morning. You paid it all. You paid it all. We are debt free. We are glad that we are debt free. Speak to us in this service, even as we again turn to the anointing that God, this anointing will break every yoke and fetter. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask the media person to give us the book of Isaiah, chapter number 41, verse 14 in the message translation. Uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter, yeah. And I want to bring greetings from the diaspora. Uh, the diaspora, we had uh, a sale. We officially opened the diaspora sale on Thursday, their time. It was Friday very early in the morning, 6 a.m. here. And they said I should greet the church. They were the first to be anointed. I did anoint them, although I was in the comfort of my house. We also shared the Holy Communion, although I was still in the comfort of my house. But they said, It was interesting because um, we had the four time zones. Because we had, we had the East African time, which was our time. Then they had some people on the, what they call Eastern time in the U.S., the Central time, and also the Western time. We had people from Canada, the U.S., different places that met, and they said, Ni wasalemi, umepokea salamu. Unajua sasa, ni wambia kama amunitumi sisemi, kwa sabu, salamu za so receive greetings from our sisters and our brothers in the U.S. Isaiah 41 verse 14 in the message translation is, there are questions there. And the first question is, ask directly to Jacob and then ask to the nation of Israel. And the question is, do you feel like lowly Warm. As an individual, then don't be afraid. And then he asked another question. Do you feel like fragile insect, Israel or nation? He says, I will help you. I, God, want to reassure you. The God who buys you back, the Holy One of Israel. And the question that is being asked to is uh, Jacob as an individual. I think it is the same question that can be asked to you as an individual. How do you feel? How do you feel? And then as the nation, how do we feel as a nation? But even in the first feeling as an individual, the Lord is saying, I shouldn't be afraid. And then as a nation, I will help you. God has help for us. There is help for you. And there is help for me. That's what the word of the Lord is, is trying to tell us this morning. That God is so concerned about you, so concerned about me. And he did everything. Actually, the Bible says he redeemed us. He brought us back. So I'm not an insect. Did I'm something worthy that the Lord had to die on the cross for me to redeem me. I'm not a worm. The Lord wants to help me. I'm not useless. I'm useful. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I think that where this is coming from is because of where Israel was at that time. The mat of the colonizers. They were not useful as they thought they would. And they looked at themselves and thought God had forgotten them. And it is in that point where Lord, the Lord comes down to remind and to tell Israel that place that you feel you have no strength, that place that you feel warmish, that is the place I want to say don't be afraid because you're not. That place when you feel like you're just an insect. God says, no, no, don't you worry. I will help you. God wants to come and help us. And the anointing that we are going to receive today is that anointing to help us. Is that anointing so that it can deal with my fears and my worries. 
I said here one time that if there is something that people fear, it's tomorrow. And I have always said that to me, guys that were 50, when I was in my teenager, they were so old. Live around those who are in 70s. Guys at 50, they look very old because they would retire at 50. And you know, to me, anybody retiring was like, we retire. And here I'm talking to people that are 50s and above. My worries and fears for that time was because at least wakitoka kuritaya walikuwa wanakufa. And I was asking somebody, why were they dying that quickly? And somebody said, because when they came to work in Nairobi, they would only go home in Christmas. So they did not connect with the, the people that were in the village. So when they retired, they did not know what to do in the village. You have nobody to give story with. Hakuna mtu wakusengenyana nae. Hakuna mtu wakukupa mawaitha hata kama si ya kweli. Hauna. Kwa hivyo nakaa nyumbani, tochi inazima, beti nakosa moto, roi nakataa kudunda, unaenda. So I thought that was very old. What has changed is the fact that I have also known that to live is God's grace. I live because God wants me to live. I'm alive today because God wants me to live. And I will live here until I finish my purpose. That when I got that into my spirit, then I, I don't fear. Actually, when I see people that are older, 100 years, I'm so excited. The other day I was talking with my friend we went to school with in Sweden and he told me his mother is 103 and she is still sober and alert. I said, great. That, yeah, God can give us years of no sorrows and no, no pain because he is God. But even if I went early, it is because I have finished my purpose and my time to go has come. So this anointing is the anointing to clear away with the fear because Kama kuna kitu kinaweza kukuwa kabla ujakufa, ni uoga. Ni uoga. E salimi ya jirani yako, muambie wacha uoga. Eh, you know, see I told you the other day I was so glad I was speaking to people that are fearful. Yeah, but I know that we came out from fear, now we are courageous people in the Lord. So this anointing that we are going to receive today, will be anointing to release us from fears and worries. But I think it is good, first of all, to, because the assumption, which is also our biggest problem as pastors, is that all of you understand what anointing is. But I know some of you have no clue what anointing is. You only know there will be oil. And uh, you even don't know how it works. Now, the only thing I don't know is how it works, but I know what it is. How it works, I have no clue. How God works, I have no clue, but I know it works. But was it, what is it? What is the purpose of anointing? So when I look at the gospel of Luke chapter number 4 verse 18, which is the, the key word for deliverance church, where Jesus Christ goes back to where he was born in Nazareth and he's picked the scroll and he is reading. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So I find three things in that scripture. I find number one, the purpose of anointing is three ways. It is to proclaim the good news. It is to heal the brokenhearted. It is to bring deliverance to the captives. So the purpose of anointing the anointing that we receive today is that God is going to release to us the spirit of proclaiming about the love of God, talking about what God does, what he has done, what he will do, and he also to bring healing to the broken heart. And there are people, the hearts are broken. So anointing comes to heal the broken hearted and to bring captivity free, deliverance to the captives. That's the first reason why anointing. So when we anoint you, we are saying, go out and proclaim the love of God. Go out and talk about what God can do. Go out and say, yes, the Lord, I was feeling like this. The Lord opened me up. And now this is where I am by the grace of God. Number two, anointing has power. The power of anointing. I also find it in the scripture. 
There are three things again in that scripture that tells me of the power of an anointing. Number one, authority over darkness. Number two, restoration of sight to the blind and setting the oppressed free. In other words, the anointing has power to liberate me, to take me out of darkness, whatever type of darkness I find myself in, to restore my sight. And I pray that God can help all of us. You know, because you see, if there is something that you and I need, is our eyes to be opened up. So that when my eyes is open, then I can know what God wants for me. And I can, also, I can also know and see what God wants to do for me. But as long as my eyes are blind, I will hear, but I will not see. May God open up our eyes so that we can see what God has for us. Sight and setting the oppressed free. In other words, whatever bondage I find myself, may this and Set me free from those oppressions that I might have heard. Thirdly, from the same scripture, proclamation through the anointing. What do I proclaim after the anointing? The ear of the Lord's favor. That is verse number 19 of Luke chapter 4. The ear of the Lord's favor. I want to believe that as we receive this anointing, we'll start talking because our eyes are open of the favor of the Lord, that I am favored. I like one of us in this church who every time I ask her, how are you? She said, favored and flavored. And I, at first I thought, wewe, nini unasama na magani wewe. But I thought what she meant was she does not only have favor of God, but God has flavored. Yani, watu anampenda kwa sababu analatha. Najua kuna wengine waneza kuwa na favor lakini ya unalatha. Ebu bwana akupe favor na akupe leather. Hallelujah. The year of the Lord's favor. And also this anointing helps you, releases you, so that you can talk. It is still in verse number 19. The day of the vengeance of our God. The day of the, vange, the, 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 the vengeance of our Lord. The year of the Lord, the day of the Lord. We proclaim. Yani mungu atanilipishia. It doesn't matter where I am. The Lord will give me the vengeance. Unajua kuna wengine hapa, kuna watu wametucheza karata na kamari. Wametucheza hivi na hapa, wanata hata kutunanganya mali ambao tuluachua na wazazi wetu. Na hapa maandiko ya nipamoyo, kwamba kuna kitu lazima nitangaze. The day of the vengeance of our God. Kuna siku ya kiyama. Kuna siku, yani wewe ni chekele leo. Lakini kwa babu woni yangu ya kesho. Na mungu wananiona kesho yangu. Kesho yangu ni bora kuliko leo yangu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. And thirdly, comforting those who mourn. That from the point of my anointing, I become a blessing to others. An encourager to others. I go out encouraging others about this love of God. So this anointing releases us to that. Remember, don't forget your eyes have to be opened up. Macho yako lazima ifunguke kabisa. Another scripture that also uh, helped me to, to, to understand and to, to, to enjoy what this uh, anointing is all about is found in the book of Isaiah 10 and verse 27. Again, this happened before, before the Isaiah 41. The Lord had always had a desire to speak to the children of Israel to tell them, you are not useless. There is something that I'm going to do. The Bible says, it shall come to pass in that day, may your day come to pass, that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. In other words, the anointing that we receive breaks every yoke. I, I, I wish I was speaking to Deliverance Church and they were receiving what I'm saying. That the, this breaks every yoke. It doesn't matter what yoke it is. This is the anointing that should break those yokes that are there, that are hindering us, that are stopping us from becoming all that we want. The anointing. So again, I find about a couple of things from when I think about what God has promised he is going to do. Anointing brings authority to us in three ways. It 
empowers me as a believer. It breaks the yoke of bondage. It brings spiritual authority and dominion like we read in the Gospel of Luke 4, 18. It is that or anointing that gives me authority. Because if I'm anointed, there is nothing you can do. You cannot an an anoint me. Eh? Nimepakwa, nimepakwa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, anointing for authority. So, we receive anointing for authority. Again, we receive anointing for advancement. Because anointing releases favor and promotion. Favor and promotion. David was a, just a shepherd boy. But with the anointing, there was favor. And one day, she was promoted. And I like that Kikuyu song that says, Only one thing can happen and your life changes. May that keondu happen even tonight. Hallelujah. Kemwetu, just one. You know, sometimes you want so many things, but God can only do one thing. Or give you an idea that you pursue and your life changes forever. May that come to pass. Anoint, anointing for advancement. Anointing releases favor and promotion. Anointing for advancement. Anointing opens doors of opportunity. I pray that God will open doors for you. May the anointing that you receive today open doors of opportunity for you. You know, you know when I talked here the other day and I didn't know somebody was listening from, from Portugal, who is a member of our church. So, and she, she, she kind of answered back in Iyo, munaitaka nini yo kitu? Iyo, iyo, comment hizo zinafanyago na watu wale wako kwa She commented and said, yes, I agree with the bishop. I carried my passport every day in church and he prayed for it every day. And one day, here I am, I use my passport. And you know, there are some of you, you have passport. Say, unaenda kupunguza vumbi. Iweke kwa begi. Ah, yani unaiweka, asubuhi unaomba, favor, favor, favor. Advancement, favor, unaweka passport yako kwa begi na unatoka. Because you will never know. We are looking for people with the passport. May God help us. But you see, our eyes have to open up because I tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. The Lord cares for the birds and the sparrows, doesn't he? But they have to leave their nest to go and look for food. Now, by the way, who can a passport? That will not happen. But what will happen is that I will be moving. Jo, 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 uh, the, you know, the, the Jordan River could be flooded, but it will take the first step for it to part ways for me. So I have to be, hey, do I have people from Mount Kenya here? You know, our show was met by something good. Our show. But our show was somewhere working in the garden. That is a story. Because what happened, Washo was chased by the husband. Iri aende kwa shamba, abaki ya kikura vinono vinono. Lakine kunguru akakuja, akashika kakitu kana itagua thega thega tuwarie. Kana kuwa kameja unono unono huko, kameja zwa kavitu, eka huka huu. Kameja, kameja. Saa, ikashika. Ikapanda juu, ikanza kuchomo na supu, uko dandi. Kana kuwa kana supu. Kumbe kalikuwa, kalikuwa kametumwa tuko mperekea washu. Pali kaliangusha, washu ndi alikuwa kilima hapo. Kase, kase, katuwa liye kaka kuja, kaka kwa kajini, pa. Shia kolira washu mugoda. But washu was in the field doing something. Did you hear what I said? So guys from Central, you have to be doing something. You cannot be idle, complaining, lamenting, and crying. But I have to be, because this anointing is anointing that gives and opens doors for me anointing to open doors for you. Hallelujah. Anointing propels believers into their destiny. It is the anointing that pushes you to your destiny. So I pray that as you receive this anointing, you are saying, Lord, may this push me to my destiny. I normally tell people, mahali nipo, sija korogewa, na usikuja kuniangalia hapo kesho. Kwa sababu, unakuja kuniangalia pare kwa sababu wauna imani. You know, there are some people, I don't know whether you have looked at yourself in, Ile shu, ile kap, kapicha kako ukiwa secondary. Eh? Anne. 
Ume kapicha kaka ukiwa seko dare kuhuli ogu. Ume shaka kangalia. Ukiko, masharia ukikompea wako kamusichana ka hiyo primary kakiwa sadade tu na uyu naonaje. Anointing. Yeah. I like the way Peter has said it. The, 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 the grace of God that has been upon Anne is the same thing. Some of you na kuna tupicha tuangu nuletago hapa. Nauliza huyo ni nani. Lakini na kuwaga ni mimi tu. Nimeshika kibao pade machakos technical. Yeah. I say. Bwana asifiwe. Na nikiangalia mithirimo ni mirefu. Sawa. Bwana yesu asifiwe. So anointing propels believers into their destiny. May God propel you to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Finally, anointing is for abundance. May God release that anointing for abundance upon us. Anointing brings blessings and prosperity. We find it in Deuteronomy. Secondly, anointing breaks the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty is broken. Anointing releases supernatural provisions. The Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But you know what? You and I will have to believe in this. Otherwise, haifanyagi kazi kama huyamini. Bwana yesu wasifiwe. So in Isaiah 10 verse 27, which I will just share a thought in there, and then we'll start the anointing. Defines the anointing as the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. In Isaiah 10, 27, it defines anointing as the burden removing because the yoke shall be removed from your shoulders. Yoke destroying power of God. And this yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is what delivers God's people and sets the captives free. The anointing is literally God on flesh doing what flesh cannot do. God comes and does what flesh cannot do. It is God super added super added to our natural nature. God comes and he adds something supernatural. Acts 10, 38, the Bible says and describe the impact of anointing on the life of the ministry of Jesus by saying how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. This powerful verse reminds that Jesus is a doer of good and that the affliction of sickness comes from the enemy, not God. And that the anointing is what removes the oppression that the devil brings our way. So it is key for us to know, don't forget, anointing is God coming to destroy the works of the devil. According to Luke 4, the purpose of anointing, I said it was twofold. It is to preach so that personal understanding and faith comes to the hearer and two, to bring to manifestation what has been proclaimed. There is no faith without the word of God and there is no manifestation without having faith in God. And the anointing is the key to both our faith and the results of our faith. So I need anointing to have faith and to have the results of my faith. The good news for believers today is that the anointing continues to function as it did during the time of Jesus when Jesus walked on earth. Every miracle, every healing, every life change was a result of the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus. This same anointing works today to provide a supernatural remedy to long-standing issues, practical issues, and impossible issues of our life. This anointing is still there to provide what we need, remedy of those outstanding issues, practical issues, and impossible issues in our lives. And I'm talking to people who have 
long-standing issues. There are people who have practical issues and others have impossible issues in, in their lives. Occasionally, you hear people running back to the, their traditions because they are afraid if they don't do certain things, there are things that are going to happen to them. But I've always said there is nothing that is going to happen to you. Why do I say so? Because Dambi za baba yangu, kwangu, haziji. Nimeokoka. Madeni yake, hayaji. Ninaweza saidia kuyalipa. Lakini silipi kwa za ninaogopa. Yapana, ni kusaidia tu. Kwa hache kuchusumbua jina ya baba yangu. But ni kataya kulala. Ati kwa sababu kuna mbuzi moja. Haiku perekewa shosho wa akina shosho. Shauri yao. Mimi niritumi wa waze. Ni kambio siju kuda buzi. Zipereku wa zipereku wa. Mimi zipereki. Ni tabariki hawa. And I have blessed them. But when they, they put at kuna kambuzi. Sijui halika. Sijui ke. I normally ask. Sasa wewe. Wewe uko hapa kwa hichachi. Na wewe umetoka Mount Kenya. Muatena halika. What is it? Do you know what it is? But they will come and tell you, your, your mother, I don't know what, they never did, and Mwati Harika, and you didn't. And now you, you want to look what it is, Mwati and you. So there are some waze somewhere that will try to define it to view. The anointing, Ebu Salimia Jirani, Akomwambia Leo Bishop, Anataku Kuhubiria. The anointing you receive today, Ebu your anointing to cut you off from your village. Yeah. Iyo kijiji imekuvuruta. Ni kama wana wa Israeli. They are going to Canaan, but they are still carrying Egypt. Hebu Egypt itoke. Bingu tuende binguni. With this anointing, I pray. Salimia jirani yako. Mwambia, bisho mana kuhubiria wewe. With this anointing, the generation of curses that you have been afraid of, we cut them off in the name of Jesus. Atikama baba yako alikufa na ukimwe na utakufa na ukimwe. You know there is nothing like that. Kwanza hiyo si unasikia ni roho mbaya? Shindwe. Ati kulikuwa na diabetes, itaniua mimi. Hapana, mimi nitaenda wakati Mungu anataka niende. May God help us to have that faith. And some of you that you call me your father, please mean it. Mean it. So that you can receive the blessing that I carry. You have to mean it. Wacha kuniambia tu ili nifrahi. Ati, oh daddy. Pana. I say. I can come back to you like a Malachi and ask you, where is my honor? But I don't want to get to that level. But I'm saying, if God has blessed me and I'm not struggling, why should you? Where have you come from? What lineage are you? We are in the lineage of Abraham. We have to believe like Abraham did. And it will be impacted to us righteousness. Oh my goodness. But some of you don't believe. Hata nikikwambia uruke, unaniangali ya pisho. Ebu kabla sijaruka, niulize maswali. Lazima niruke kwa church. Sinirukie kwangu. You know some of you behave like Naman. You have argument over everything. Ata sahi. Some of you are even arguing and debating. I told you this. Me, I don't know how it works, but I know it works. Anointing works. I told you of a story, and I think to run very quickly, because this story is true, of this girl that uh, got born again in Nyeri. This girl was in primary, and she felt the conviction to get born again. Then she went to the priest because the, where they come from is where the Catholics have, are dom, domineering. She wanted to get born again. She went to the father. And the father looked at, at the, this girl and for sure, even me, if I was a father, on a natural way, I would ask myself, unaokoka nini? But if you have conviction, unaokoka, kuokoka sini kumukubali yesu wa yabona na mokozu wa maisha yako. Kwa nini lazima uwefanya dhambi gani? Dhambi ya Adam inatosha. So when she went, she was told by the priest, 
wewe unaokoka nini mtoto wewe tugekura kure tuonokaga twarikia rugendo ndotie kuhoyo kue don't pray to die to be saved but the girl was convicted so she went and prayed for herself lord jesus lord jesus i receive you i receive you as lord and savior lord and savior from today i'm born again amen and she started telling people i'm born again nimezaliwa mara ya pili then when she was ready she discovered there is baptism of water then she was looking for somebody to baptize her nobody would do it because she was baptized when she was a baby she was baptized so she discovered a partner she would go to the river she went to the river and said i baptize myself now in the name of god the father tulio the son tulio and the holy spirit tulio and then she came out and said i've been baptized her performance started becoming very poor she was bright she became very poor the father was concerned because she kept on declaring nimeokoka nimeokoka and you know those were the days kuokoka was almost compared with the poverty and also ujinga shindwe hiyo pepo hiyo pepo ya ujinga tuliweka kando tuna madaktari wameokoka wanampenda Yesu na majaji wameokoka wanampenda Yesu so at that confusion she read the bible and said oh there is anointing <laughs> there is anointing now she also knew nobody will anoint her because they did not even believe so what did she do she was looking for oil of anointing she she looked for it she looked for it she looked for it she found it it was kimbo she melted it and then anointed her self her anointing she said this head this head that has a blockage somewhere with this anointing wewe mahali umenifungia funguka come out and the lord did it so she was giving a testimony to our bishop because now she is the doctor in the us my prayer is that you will ask the lord actually hebu tumwambie mungu sote pamoja tumwambie mungu pamoja oh lord open my eyes let's see like we mean it oh god open my eyes so that i can see what you have for me in jesus name it will all depend with opening up of my eyes 